One of the epic air races of 1934, the one from London to Melbourne, has inspired two modern-day British aviators to try it again in an aeroplane that's appropriately 50 years old. It's all part of Victoria's 150th anniversary. But the trip will be hazardous, say the veterans of half a century ago. They wouldn't recommend it. Well, should they do it? London to Melbourne is a long way. Lee Hatcher and Greg Hoy report. There could have been no more daring aviators than the men and women who took part in the London to Melbourne air race of 1934. It was a time when aircraft were still struggling to gain acceptance as a respectable form of transport. The race gave this fledgling industry an opportunity for worldwide promotion. There was the promise of comfort and safety all the way down under. There were 21 starters, including a 20-year-old Australian, Charles Melrose, who flew a Pussmoth. De Havilland had designed a new aircraft, especially for the race. It was the Comet, built in a rush. By the time pilots like Owen Cathcart-Jones arrived for the start, they'd only had a couple of hours' practice in it. I'm glad we got a smart car, safe there. I must say it's an encouragement for the rest of the trip. Indeed, his lack of experience showed on takeoff. Today, Owen Cathcart-Jones lives in America. He's one of the few veterans of the race still alive. Greg Hoy asked him how he felt at the start of it. Scared stiff. <laughs> no, it's like you're driving about it, you know. It's like anxiety about a new airplane, no contact with the ground, flying above clouds for hours and hours and hours, and trying to guess where you were. Oh, yeah. His memories of the trip are still rich if a little scary, like the day they arrived in Mount Isa. Well, you couldn't find the airfield. You couldn't find it. And finally, all the inhabitants of Mount Isa got their cars and they formed a square around where the airfield was and helped us land. And I've never forgotten that. Never forgotten that. It was wonderful. Then after that, all the trouble seemed to cease and we just zoomed down to Melbourne. What uh, was the funniest incident of the flight yeah. for you? What do you think was perhaps the most amusing incident of the flight for On you? On our way back. Uh, when we were in Singapore, um, just about ready to take off, some young official from the British um, embassy there came rushing up and he said, oh, he said, will you take back a young cola bear, uh, which is a present for Lady Mountbatten? And I said, what the hell do you think we are? I said, look at the size of the cockpit. It's this size. Where are we going to put the color bear on my lap? So he took the body bear off and, and that's it. This is the comet that won the race. It's been fully restored here in England. Its winning time was 70 hours and 59 minutes. To capture the spirit of 1934, two British businessmen, Tim Williams and Henry Lobeshire, are embarking on the trip to Australia in a tiny pussmoth built in 1930. Tim and Henry don't have the time pressures on them. Their trip will retrace the exact route of the air race, but they'll be doing it in three months. So how safe will it be? It'll be safe. This aeroplane's been taken to pieces and every nut and bolt's been inspected and put back together again in the right place, I hope. Henry, are you confident? No, I wouldn't be going if I wasn't. Um, um, I have every faith in it. The engine's been done over and uh, the airframe's 100% sound. What are these planes like to fly? Um, very comfortable uh, for fairly short periods, i.e. two or three hours is quite pleasant. We will be running it for anything up to seven hours, eight hours. Um, I, sh I imagine we'll be wanting to move about a bit by then. Uh, I mean, uh, anything, you, anything over about three hours is, starts to get a bit uncomfortable. 
It's not. I mean, any if you sit on any airliner, it's uncomfortable after three or four hours anyway. Well, I find them. Tim, is it boring work? Some of it is. I mean, flying across the Saudi Arabian desert is, is a long way, and it's all yellow and hot. But uh, some of it's going to be absolutely fascinating. We're spending uh, about 10 days in India, and uh, we're touring, first of all, down towards Bombay, and uh, then we're going up towards New Delhi, the Ganges, and eventually we shall make a little trip up to Mount Everest into, into Nepal. And uh, some of that is going to be absolutely mind-blowing, I hope. <laughs> I've never been there before, and, and uh, uh, I can't see... It's going to be like a geography book unfolding to me. How confident are you that the, the plane can make it? I'm very confident. I, I can't think of a nicer aircraft that I'd like to do it in. I really can't. And uh, the thought of seeing half the world just through the, through the windscreen of this old thing is, is terrific. <laughs> what do you think of the men who did that in 1934? Well, they were brave guys. I mean, we're having it easy compared with, with them because uh, they, had, uh, they were just doing it with a map in their hand, looking out of the window, and they were racing. We're not racing. And, and uh, they, were, they were getting up in the morning and they were, they were going all day. Sometimes they'd go all night and um, they'd get down there in... We're taking eight weeks. They took eight days in one of these. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's brave. And the feeling is mutual on the other side of the Atlantic. This is what one of those brave men has to say about the 1984 flight. I think they're extremely courageous, but also very crazy. They don't know what it's going to be like. They don't know. And of course, they're having far more trouble than we had, because they have to arrange the permits to fly through various countries. And uh, that was all smoothed out for us in those days. Now it would be very difficult, especially, you know, since all the trouble in the Middle East. Would you advise them against making the flight? No. No, I wouldn't advise them against it. You know, God help them. Let me ask both of you how, and maybe even if, you can afford such an indulgence for, uh, for more than three months. I think the answer in both cases, we can't. But given an opportunity like this, I mean, you've just got to go and say, blow the rest of the world and go and do it, haven't you? Henry? Well, I bought a Tiger Moth in Australia, and I always wished to fly it to England, but uh, it was just impractical and uh, well, well beyond me uh, expense-wise. And it's something I've always wanted to do, and uh, I really think it'll be um, just a trip of a lifetime. me all that way and just with one engine and with one wooden propeller what happened if you've got white ants somewhere over the Sahara anyway Ross will be back with the news extra after this break